Hello there, this is all to do with a crock and bush today and what I'm going to show you is pretty much seven stages of making a crock and bush. Um, crock and bush is generally used at uh, French weddings and it's, it's a highly prized piece of pastry. It's generally filled with a creme pâtissier but the creme pâtissier can be flavoured in all sorts. You can be flavoured with chocolate, orange, liqueurs, anything you like really and it's generally dipped and finished off with caramel uh, but today what I'm going to do is, is actually dip it in chocolate simply because we English love chocolate and the simple fact is it's a damn sight easier to make than the, the caramelised one but in a future edition I'll probably do the caramelised one as well so you can see that but today we're going to do crock and bush it's going to have seven stages it's going to be decorated with proper chocolate not the baker's chocolate not the the stuff that you really dislike but it's the real nice sharp shiny crunchy chocolate it's going to be filled with an orange and chocolate creme pâtissier and it's going to be decorated with um, uh, chocolate roses but modeling roses and all the way down and at the end of that um, hopefully we'll have a chocolate crock and bush Right, one of the next stages in making the, the crock and bush is to actually look at the decoration side of it. I'm going to put on it for decoration, I'm going to put some chocolate modelling paste roses on it and some leaves on it so it looks really quite nice. And I'm also going to do some tempered chocolate, almost like lily leaves as well, coming around the base of it. I've made the chocolate earlier on, chocolate modelling paste, I've allowed that to cool. It's taken probably about oh, a good couple of hours just to cool down sufficiently to get it into a hard lumpy type thing. At this point now you really have to work it back into a soft malleable paste. And the only way you can do that is by brute force to be honest with you. Don't take a huge amount, you know that might even be too much there. Take enough that you can actually work with it and you know just work with it on that. You can see how dense the chocolate mm. is there. So then just, just beat it. to the point where it then becomes a little bit more yeah. malleable rather than solid that you can't do anything with. And at that point it's just a case of now shifting all the stuff that's hard off your bench and then just working it down until it becomes <clears throat> a little bit more. So I guess the gen gentle body heat makes it a bit flexible. And, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. After a while it'll set solid again. Yeah. So you can make you can make cuts out of this, you can make anything you like really. Um, and once you've got a little bit of body heat on it, also you get a really nice shine. Mm. The more you put onto it, the shinier it gets. Yeah. It were. Um, you need a little bit of oil. I'll use olive oil, I'll use cooking oil. And I'm going to make the base. I'm going to put one large rose on top and I'm going to put lots of little roses coming down. So to make the base for the large rose, Take a lump of it, work it into a nice ball, put your hands together almost like you're clapping and then create by rolling it almost like a teardrop. Then press that down, sorry I need some plastic, I'll just put it on the top of the plastic then it will stick, press it down, allow it to stand like that. Put your finger and thumb together, press it in, so you're creating that sort of effect, and then press it down, so it gives it a nice base to actually sit on. And that's the base for all of them, so I'll do that as a big one, and I'll simply do smaller ones that are coming down. So I need several bases to work with. Okay, got that. So again, the same sort of format, except these are slightly smaller. Press them down. So roll them into a nice round ball. Get it nice and pliable. Now rubbing your hands together into a teardrop. Press it down and squash it in. And I'll do all the other work, but I'll just do the main one so you can see how it's done. 
Um, and if you're going to do these, then it's going to take a lot of practice. The more you do, the better you get. Mm. You know? On average, I generally say, when I'm teaching students, I'll say to them, if they've created 50 of these, they'll start to get it really right. So it's a lot of messing about. But worth it if you, mm. if you want to do it. So you've got that. Next bit. careful what you bash this on as well. Be careful. Don't do it on a, on a marble slab yeah. because you'll break it. And don't do it on a on a bench that's had fish on it or meat on it because it'll absorb the flavour. Yeah. Garlic, onions, otherwise you end up with a chocolate flavoured garlic rose. Which can kind of be an odd sensation in your mouth to say the least. But a novelty. Yeah. Okay. So next step. Bash it down, roll it into a series, a, a tube, and then cut to the size. These are going to be the petals. Okay. Right. The next stage of this is to take all of these while they're still fairly malleable, and turn them into just balls. You don't have to. You can actually press them out in that shape already because they're fairly cylindrical. You could get away with it by just leaving them like that, but I tend to make them into balls simply because uh, they, they have a better petal shape. So I've got enough there to do one. So I'm going to make this into a nice five leaved English type rose where it'll start off. You need a bit of heavy duty plastic, and I just take plastic bags, but a heavy duty one. Make sure it's clean. A little bit of oil, but only sufficiently to stop it from sticking to it. If you've got too much, just wipe it off. All you're doing is putting a really fine film of oil on there. Take the first one, pop it there, and then simply press it down into a cylindrical shape, a, a button shape. Then, using your thumb and a feel, push out the side from the middle, push out the top from the middle, and the other side. Leave the bottom and the middle fairly thick. So if you look at what I've got there, is thickness there, but really very, very thin on the outside, but thick in that area there. Okay? Take the first one that I did, just tuck the thick bit just at the bottom where you squeezed it in, and then wrap that bit around, and then allow that to wrap around as well. So you're starting to create your rose, and then just push it in again with your finger and thumbs. You're keeping that in shape. Okay? That's the first leaf. Second leaf, exactly the same format. Press it down into a, a, um, yeah. a button and then push the side out, push the top out, and push the other side out, leaving the middle and the bottom thick or thicker. Okay, again. The only difference here is the next bit this time, what we'll do is just put it on our fingers and push it slightly, push it in together and then push it down with your thumb. So you can see there, there's a petal shape already formed. Transfer it to that hand, try not to hold onto it too long, remember it's chocolate, it'll melt. And then push those two back, so you're creating a leaf shape. Find the seam on this one, and then immediately just press that onto the seam. Is that so? You're closing the seam with yeah. the next page, yeah. And it'll stick on. So I'm going to put three leaves around there, then four leaves around there, then five leaves around there. And they're all going to be the same effort, except the last one is tucked into the first one. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Okay. So again, into a um, button shape, tops, side, take hold of it, using your fingers, press it in, squash it down, open it, and then, because I'm putting three in, I want a third of that covered 
with a, a third of that. So just show that slightly higher up. Okay, a third of that. Yeah. Just cover it. And again, just press it on. The, the biggest problem you've got here is because it's chocolate. If you've got warm hands, it's absolute murder to do. Yeah. So, you know, just try and cool your hands off best you can or try and touch it as little as you can. And again, same thing. The last one I'm going to take over. It's going to go on the outside of that one, but it's going to go on the inside of the first one that I put in, just like a real rose. So, again, push it with your fingers, create your leaf shape, your petal shape, push out that, the top with finger, and then open the first one, tuck that in, bring it back on itself. If they undo, don't worry, you'll soon push them back onto each other again, and just pat it down. At this point, while it's still reasonably malleable, reasonably malleable, is just then create more of a petal overturn as it were. What's the technical term for that? I've got no idea. It doesn't need um, anything else to stick them together, just stick it no. straight chocolate to chocolate. Chocolate to chocolate, right. if you get it right. If it actually doesn't stick together very well, then use a little bit of melted chocolate, tempered chocolate. Okay. Right, the next one, I'm going to do four. So again, the same sort of thing. This time, I'm just going to push the ends out and over the a seam again. It doesn't matter which seam you start on, but over a seam again. Mm. Okay. And again, the next one's the same. I might just do the four petals on this. Looking at the size of this, it might only need a four petaled rose. Five one might be overdoing it. Again, the same thing. But this time, rather than taking it over a third, I'm just trying to balance that off so I'm going to get four petals around there. So I'm just trying to find a spot where I'm going to get four petals yeah. evenly spaced. And then press it down. Last one. And these get progressively this set again, so you might have to manipulate them again. They start to get too hard. Over and then again. Manipulate it. Pop it down. Yeah, it's starting to get a bit hard, so they might need a good bash again. And this is the final one, so I'm putting it over the first, over the last one, but inside, tuck it inside I guess the first you, one. You're normally working a little bit quicker than this, aren't yeah. you? So you'd, be, you'd be okay. Yeah. So you just show me, okay, I see. What so it doesn't matter how rough they are. No. Petals are rough. Mm. And, you know, they're, they're reasonably sym symmetrical, but they're still what nature produces nothing's well I, just, I don't know whether it's nothing's perfect in I nature. think yeah I think I think might one or two people would disagree with that one. you are yeah I think so but you know you can only do your best can't you to try and imitate mm, look at that you know and and that's your rose that's really nice so once you've got that done the stand that it's based on you can then using a knife, make sure you don't go through your finger at the same time, but just use a knife to cut the base off, that stands to one side, and that then base can be used in the next lot of mm. roses, and it continues like that. I'll just do a very couple of leaves, and again, this is starting to harden off now, so you've really got, you've just got to use a little bit of warmth from your body, just to manipulate them down. So again, this time, into a ball this time, and then doing the same sort of thing to create that, that um, uh, uh, teardrop tear shape. And again, that will do four This leaves. time, take your teardrops, pop them in, fat end away from you, and press them down so they've just got a little bit of flatness to them at this point. And then, literally, push down both sides of the leaf, but not at the bottom, only at the top, and using your finger, you can, you can feel where it is, using your finger like that, so by the time you've finished... I guess it's trying, to, and, it, and it, if, you, if you don't do a nice job of the leaf, you can just mould, you can flatten just it, again, it again. So you can see where it's fat in the middle and the bottom, and where it's very, very thin. And you made that line between basically your thumb and your finger? Just your thumb and, the, thumb and your finger by just right. scooping it down. Again, flatten it, 
the sides, not the bottom, just the sides, down to the, the point, and then just kind of doing that. Yeah. And again, another leaf. If it starts to stick to this plastic, which you will do eventually, mm. just use a little bit more oil. And that was just normal olive oil, or was it? Or just normal olive oil. You yeah. can use cooking oil. Doesn't leave a, doesn't leave a, a, a flavour on there. No, because the chocolate's too strong for it. Yeah. The chocolate overcomes it all, as long as you don't use garlic oil or chilli oil. Chilli oil, like truffle oil. Chilli oil would be quite nice actually. That <laughs> <laughs> must be interesting, yeah. Well, it's, it's a big thing, isn't it? Chilli truffle, chili truffle chocolate. oil, is it? Truffle oil, was yeah. it? Yeah. Nice taste. So once you've got that, mm. simply take the leaves again. I tend to do the, the top bit rather than the vein bit. I tend to just take a back of a knife and literally not dragging the knife, the back of the knife down. You don't want to cut them, you just want to indent it. To get a nice leaf or a variety, just twist them. And all of a sudden you've now got a leaf that's got a twist to it, rather than straight bog standard. Mm. Again, follow the same pattern for all of them. Okay, and then you might want to put on that leaf, you might just want to turn it round. So again, you've got a different shape. And you just, um, for a rose leaf, you just, depending on the size of your roses, you've got to sort of, um, do the leaves according to the size. Like for example, that one is pretty much about the right size, maybe a bit big. Um, and then you've got this one as well, again, slightly big and accentuating it, but it kind of goes together. And after a while, while you, those are stood there, just waiting for you to use them, they will last literally for months. Mm. Literally for months. They won't spoil, as long as you don't leave them somewhere really hot. Um, or in the fridge, because in the fridge you'll end up by having condensation on them and yeah. that will spoil the chocolate. So it's, as long as you put them in a box, keep them somewhere cool and ambient, well ambient really. And that's it. So that's your, your rose and I'll be using that later on and those are your, your leaves which will harden up as we go through and that's kind of Excellent. what you've got for the decoration. Okay. And I'll just, as I'm working, I'll just make up a load more as, I, as and when I require them.